M. Oh Lord, just once more. Hot Springs, Arkansas, you see. Good morning, friends. Good afternoon. I broke my watch. I can't tell what time it is. My brother says, still morning, brother. Still morning, is it? All right. Besides, we are living in eternity. We have no time. Time limit stopped when Jesus Christ gave me his life inside of me to live by. So we are eternal creatures right now sitting together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What a time. Now, this is my second day here with you, but my, it's like cold molasses on a morning. It's so thick and wonderful. I have never enjoyed myself anymore in any meeting, and I'm looking around now at night. They're so crowded, I can't see nobody, but today I can look around. I had the privilege of shaking hands with this fine bunch of ministers in this group here. I remember an old man used to come to our church by the name of John Ryan, Elder Ryan, they called him. He was from Dodgeac, Michigan. And he used to preach a little bit and then run back and shake my hand. And then he'd preach a little bit and then run back and shake my hand. I said, Brother Ryan, I appreciate that, but I don't get the meaning of why you do it. He said, when the battery gets low, I need it charged. So I just got all charged up. I just in a Methodist minister up from my, in my country that was received the Holy Ghost and I baptized him sitting over here to my left. Brother Junior Jackson, I seen him shaking his hands like that, kind of reminded me of Brother Ryan. How many thinks that the Methodist can't receive the Holy Ghost? You're mistaken. Stand up, Brother Junior Jackson, him and his lovely wife there. They're from down in Indiana. There, a Methodist minister. Where is Willard Collins? Is he in the building this morning? Where are you at, Brother Willard? I thought he was around here. Another Methodist minister standing over here. If you don't think Methodists can receive the Holy Ghost and be rebaptized, stand up, Brother Collins. There's another one. The brother was brought up to Asbury College at Wilmore, Kentucky, out of a fine Methodist background. Now, there is some more people with me here that's come down. I had them say amen, and I know they're here. But I don't see them. Brother Fred Solomon from the Tabernacle Jeffersonville. Fred, are you and Brother Tom here? I believe I hear him say, yeah, over here in the corner, yeah? We're very happy to introduce this man. I don't exactly see at this time. There's perhaps more here than I don't know. I think Brother Jack Moore just got through speaking. And so there's a fine man, and we love them. I know it's been such a wonderful time of being here. I said to her wife, my wife, I said, you, you should have come down in this meeting. We believe in a nice old fashioned Pentecostal meeting. We believe that by the Spirit of God, there is all different types of phases and dominations can sit, come together and sit together in heavenly places of the church. Our differences makes no difference there, when we're in Christ, we are under the blood and in the fellowship of his love. And I want to say this to this group of ministers. I come into Pentecost from a missionary Baptist, and I have admired Pentecost. They are my people. I love them. And I thought there was any church any more right than that. I would be at that other church. But I'm with Pentecost because I think it's the closest thing that I see in the scripture. If I know something else, I would be with them. And so not regarding any other belief, not at all. But the reason I think of Pentecost because it's closer to what I think is scriptural than what anything that I know of. And there's one outstanding thing in this convention that I have noticed that's clean face women. None of that manicure, you know, or whatever to call that stuff. I don't like it. That ain't becoming to Christians, huh? Huh. Ah, that's right. I like that. And the old fashioned school that likes cleanness, you see. I like to see women, you know. I don't mean there's no joke is to stay anything jokes and sacrilegious to say so but I don't say this for that meaning this is no place for that by the way when did you get this thing this come from a tabernacle it looks like it sure does is that right church doesn't that look like the old pulpit well I think the same old message we preach there goes across it anyhow 
so you know there's only one woman in the Bible that ever painted her face, and she never painted her face to meet God, she painted her face to meet man. That's right, you know what God did for her, fed her to the dogs. So when you see a woman wearing paint, you just say, good morning, Miss Dogmeat. That's exactly what it is. That's awful, isn't it? But that's what God thinks about it. She's just made common dog meat for wild dogs. That's about what she is. Some of these wild wolves that goes around whistling, you know, what they call wolfing, you know, that's what it is. Just dog meat again. I'm thankful for you women. God grant the grace to hold you in the sight of the cross. Get away from these things of the earth. After all, we are on our road to glory. We are citizens of another kingdom. Long time ago, I was just looking over, around over the audience to see if I could see one of the people, and that's some of our colored friends, the Negro, you know. A long time ago, down here in the south, they used to make slaves out of them. Now, I'm a southerner, and there's one thing I'd like to say about them. I wish I could talk to Martin Luther King, that man being a Christian, don't know he's leading his people right into a death trap, where there's going to be millions of them killed, see? He's wrong. I love my brethren, my colored brethren. I wouldn't be an African around preaching to them if I didn't love them. They're God's people, the same as we are. But I don't believe that man under this is only going to cause many, many more of them to be killed. Then it'll start a revolutionary again. That will never weed out of the people down here. So they are not slaves. They have as much freedom as anybody else. They, if they were slaves, I would be on that side. But they're not slaves. It's just because they want to go to school. They got schools. Let them go to school. That's right. Was there? Remember that old colored brother standing up that morning in that trial? He asked the militia if he could speak. He said, "I never was ashamed of being a black man." My maker made me a black man, but this morning I'm ashamed the way my race is acting. What's them people doing to us? Only been good to us. The white woman raised up and said, I don't want my children schooled by a white woman. Said, because they, she wouldn't pay the interest, take interest in my children like a color woman was in my own race. Said, they look at our schools, they got swimming pools, they got better schools and everything. Why do we want to go to their schools? That's right. I believe God is a God of all. I'd say he's a God of variety. He makes big mountains and little mountains. He makes deserts, he makes forests, he makes white men, black men, red men. We should never cross that up. It becomes a hybrid and anything hybrid cannot rebuild itself. You are ruining the rest of people. There's some things about a colored man that a white man doesn't even possess them traits. A white man is always stewing and worrying. A colored man is satisfied in the state he is in, so they don't need those things. But back in the slave time, they were selling slaves, human beings, like an auction block. Like they would a used car lot. There was a buyer come forth through the country, and he would buy them up and go sell them and make money on them. Just like you would on a used car or something. Never was God's program. God made man. Man made slaves. One is not to rule over the other. We are to live together in unity and peace. And this man come to an old plantation. He wants how many slaves you got? I said a hundred or more. He was looking them over and he happened to notice there was one slave among those people. The slaves were sad. The Boers of Africa had caught the slaves, brought them over here and made them and sold them. And they knew they never go back to their homeland. They knew they were here for the rest of their life. They never see their children again. They never see Papa and Mama. They were here for all the time. And they were sad. And they'd even carry whips and whip them to make them work. And so they had to make them work because they didn't want to work. They were just all broke down. This slave buyer looked over there and he found among the slaves there was one fellow that didn't have to whip him. His chest up, chin up, right in there on the job. And the broker said to the owner of the slaves, said, I want to buy that slave. Said, he's not for sale. He said, he seems to be different from other slaves. Said, he is. Said, what makes him different? Is he a boss over the rest of the slaves? He said, no. 
he's just asleep said maybe you feed him different than you do the rest of them he said no he eats in the gully with the rest of the slaves I said what makes him so much different he says i always wondered that myself till i found out of in the homeland of africa where he come from his father is a king of the tribe and regardless of where he's at he still knows he's the son of a king and he acts like one hallelujah if you're a daughter of a king then don't act like the world if you're the son of the king don't act like the world we are we know that we are sons and daughters of god though we are here in a dark world of death and sorrow yet we know where our heritage is we are sons and daughters of god sons and daughters of a king not a king but the king let's act like it a few moments ago prison was late i left the ethiopian girl making up the room and i noticed she was doing something i was trying to write out some scripture text for something i wanted to speak on I don't come to speak just to be heard i come to say something that will help the church to do some help and then i studied and this little lady kept kind of holding around directly she, she said would you pardon me sir and i said yes ma'am she said they tell me that you is a man who did got favor from before god that when you pray for the sick that god answers your prayers i said he don't only answer mine he answers anybody that will believe him i said i am sick sir would it be out of the way if you'd if i'd ask you to have a little prayer for me said not at all i stepped out to her i prayed something like this lord jesus many years ago when you're dragging an old cross up a sandy hill and dragging out the footprints of the blood that was trailing down off your back your little frail body got so weak that you fell beneath the load there was one standing by the name of simon a negro he picked up the cross and helped you bear it he is one of his children this morning sick about that time it happened see he is god of the whole human race now friends you are such a nice audience and me being off coming off the field of missions out yonder before devils and witch doctors and so forth don't you think they won't challenge you you had better know what you're talking about when you come before them but under such as that and then coming here where the home fires are burning among his christians and so forth you don't know what a release it is for a man to stand like this i wish that i could just set back then the audience and hear this fine anointed brethren preach the word and i could just raise up my hands and cry and shout and pray and what a thing it is to warm by the fire is such a wonderful thing but usually my brethren i've got so many brethren that love me and they ask me to speak and therefore i know that called to the service of the king i must try to work the best i can but I always overdo it by staying too long. And I know you're waiting for your dinner, been in here since 8 o'clock this morning or something in this group of people, but I thought that coming this afternoon to speak to you for just a short time, I wrote up some notes here and some scriptures I'd like to refer to, and in doing this, thinking that you've got a man here who is far more eligible and a calling of God to take this place than me, but mine is prayer for the sick, seeing visions, and so forth. And I was talking to someone a few minutes ago. If you look in the Life magazine last month, you'll see there, and you got that tip. I'm not a tape salesman, but if you ever believe the words that I preach, and you can afford it, get the seven seals, and first get what time is it, sirs? Listen to that spoke of six months before it happened, and science is baffled, standing right under where it was happening, and told them six months before that there would be seven angels in a form of a consolation and look like a pyramid would drop down and I would be standing north of Tucson, Arizona, and there would be a roar that would even shake the rocks from the mountains where the Fred Sussman sitting there who was standing with us, many of them when it happened. Now, science took the picture of it. You seen it went on Associated Press. They didn't know what it was. There's a cloud hanging 26 miles high, that's 15 miles, or 20 above even where the vapor is at. They don't know what it's all going about. And they are trying to investigate it. And there, right under it, I was standing. And those seven angels...
roaring out their voices of those seven seals standing there, and the witness, three of us, as a witness of the things that was prophesied on the tape, says, what time is it? And there now they're trying to find out. It's a mystery to them. Some of them said, go, go. Why don't you tell them? It would be just like when the angel of the Lord appeared here at Houston, Texas, in that light. I told the people, all my life I've seen that light. The church knows it. Science knows it. It's everything has to testify when Jesus Christ makes a move. And there it is, the magazine. If you want to look at in it, it's the one that's got Rockefeller and his new wife on the back. I think it's May's issue of the Life magazine. He is God. We're living in the last days. And I've come this morning to try to pick out a few notes here and things to speak on something that would help the church, would help these minister brothers to put my shoulders on the wheel with this man. We are brothers and they bring me here because they believe in the same ministry. We've been saved during this meeting. Why don't you take your membership up with some of these fine churches here that believe this type of ministry? They believe it, they stand behind it, and I come that we might lay down the scripture and for the something that might help the church. And my subject, like this morning, is to what state that I think the Pentecostal church is of this day, what stand and what hour are we standing in, and what's the possibility, now let me quote that again, in what state the church is standing in now, and what possibilities lies ahead of it. I want to read from the scripture for text and I want to read from the book of Judges, the 16th chapter, 27th and 28th verses. And the house was filled with men and women and all the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women and behold, while Samson made sport and Samson called unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, strengthen me, I pray thee. Only this once, O Lord, that I may be avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. I would like to take the text out of that from that O oh Lord just once more. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. It must have been a lovely afternoon, something like we're enjoying today here in the, this conference here in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And there's a great celebration going on, but very much contrary than the celebration is today. There were about 3,000 Philistines looking down from the galleries to a strange pair that entered the great arena and highly honored warlords and their fancy jeweled deck ladies was all sitting in position. And as it was then, there was, oh, something like a mushroom. That there was a building setting upon pillars that went out, something like maybe a modernistic type of an architect, architecture. And all these Philistines gathered up there and had placed themselves up for this great event. And they were in this great celebration and all their eyes were centered to this middle of the arena. They must have stood up to get a better look at the event was just about to take place. And now, as we sit here this afternoon, let's see if we can, with imaginary mind, place ourselves in that position to look at the scene, what do we see? coming, moving out to the center of the arena, come a little boy holding the hand of a blind man, thumbling, staggering along. They had many monkey shows and little tricks and so forth, but now has arrived the time for the main event, the thing that they had waited on so long. The main event of the day, the preliminaries are over, the halls that echoed all afternoon with drunken revelry, for they were celebrating the victory of Dagon, their fish got over the ark and the promise of Jehovah. What a disgraceful sight it is, as you can imagine such a thing taking place, of the fish god of a heathen nation celebrating the victory over the servants of Jehovah, all because of the failure of the man to carry out the things that he had been ordained to do. And here was a heathen drunken brawling out jewel women, painted faces, a modern Hollywood celebration, bringing the servant of the Lord God bound in shackles for the main event of the afternoon. The Lord must have, have dragged along their stumbling come this great mass of human flesh 
both eyes out, hair hanging down his back, tied and bound to make entertainment for a drunken, brawling bunch of unbelievers. He must have stumbled to the post where they were going to meet, make the fun start from. When I think of that, I think of other church that was ordained of God to do something for God and it suffered the enemy to blind his eyes from the word of the living God and make the commandments of God and to the task that it was ordained of God to do only to be spoiled in a hiding place for drunken, painted face, jewel decked, short wearing, bobbed hair women, and a man of the world, a church that ought to be shining in the power and the strength of the Lord. What a disgrace! How humiliating it must have been for Samson, with all of his framework made up that was more than able and had proved God had his strength through his framework, and every muscle that he ever had still was in his body, and the blessings of the Lord had left him, and may we have all of our framework, we may have our international rituals, we may have our names in the papers and on the ledgers, but I wonder today, if the Pentecostal church isn't standing about the same place with its eyes poked out from the people of the world, and for the purpose that Jesus died, that we together could fellowship around the world and the things of God. Humiliated he was in the midst of the time that he lived, and I see Samson stand there, it's a symbol, a symbol of a fallen, morally corrupted nation and a morally fallen, corrupted church, because he both symbolized Israel as a nation and the power of God which belongs in the church, and it's certainly a pathetic sight as we see him stand there after all he's bringing out there and this lad leading him and no eyes if the enemy can only blind your eyes from the real thing of god you'll walk right over the top of it and not know it no matter what god does and vindicates it by his scripture and proves it by his power if your eyes are not open to the things of god you'll only walk over there it as blind as you can be and there he stands, so it must have been a breathtaking time. And these drunken soldiers and women with their cocktail glasses in their hand, I can hear it echo across the halls. So this is Samson, the mighty man of God, the mighty man of valor, the great warrior, standing in that condition. I'd imagine through those warriors as they stood with their arms around their modern Hollywood sweethearts, and these, their fine tins of jewelry dingling, the members of this great church of Dagon, I imagine some of them could remember that by the name of Samson, his very name shook them. His very name brought fear upon them. For he was anointed of God, many of them remembered it. Many of the soldiers standing there could remember of seeing him standing with a jawbone of a mule in his hand, a thousand dead Philistines laying there. How could it happen? When the jawbone of a mule hit one of those helmets practically an inch and a half thick of solid brass, why? You strike that helmet with the jawbone of a mule, that mule's jaw would fly to thousands of pieces. But Samson, with the power of God upon him, beat down a thousand Philistines, breaking down their shields and laying them at the, his feet. I'd imagine many of those warriors had fled during that time, stood back up there and remembered, and that is Samson. They remembered of seeing the job in his hand and saying, who else wants some of this? He was a man who could speak. He was a man who was anointed of God. God promised to bless him. He was in the strength of Jehovah. Oh, no doubt, there's many here can remember back when the church stood in that kind of strength. But now all broke up all kinds of dominations, one fighting the other one. The old all night prayer meetings is not heard of no more. Street meetings is absolutely gone, they're obsolete. Yet we have got our structure. We've got the framework, but where is the God of miracles, frankly? Many deny it, even denying divine healing many. Right here in this state, I had a churchman with a great church seed. I wanted to get some seats to put there in the hot springs at the armory where I was here, me and Brother Mo at a Pentecostal seed, I wouldn't even let, he wouldn't let me have the seats. He said, I wouldn't let anybody sit on my seats that believed in divine healing. 
that's not only here it's everywhere what's the matter prejudice because of sponsorships and other organizations forgetting that we are god's people by birth samson had forgot that also i remember i guess while he was standing there there were some of them remembered that night at gaza how that the man could pick up the gates of gaza lay them upon his shoulders when they tried to fence him in you can't fence the anointing of god in no organization can hold it god saves those who he has called all the father has given you will come well they thought they had him fenced in and he picked up the gates and put them upon his shoulders and walked away went up the top of the hill and sat down big brass gates that would weigh up tons and little man pull them out of the rocks fold them up and lay them on his shoulder and walk up the hill with them when anything that stood in the way of god many of them in that drunken brawl could remember that of samson and what was the matter today he didn't there stood samson but the spirit of the lord didn't come on him no more he was anointed he had more stripes with of this power by a woman that lured him away from the commandments of the lord i wonder today if that isn't something like our church you see woman in the bible represents church and wonder if we haven't listened to the lure of other denominations tried to educate our ministers into a bachelor's of arts degree that your congregation could see a pastor has a ba dd or ld wonder if we haven't went off on some a great one tantrum to try to build a church that's a little better than the methodists of the presbyterian we would be better off in some mission with the spirit of god upon us than would be in this condition wonder if we haven't proselyted and pulled from one to the other to try to make our organizations grow and we have got great structure but where is the spirit of the lord there he stood stripped by a woman what must have went through that man's mind as he stood there his time to think it over i hope the church gets that much time which is more to you a million more or a deeper blessing of god in your soul we have searched and could have many more things that i've jotted down here about those lords and what samson did what they were thinking now let's go down to samson And what do you think was going through his mind of the many victories that he had had, the many great things that he had done, but the Spirit of the Lord was on him, but he was conscious that the very he had every muscle, but the Spirit of the Lord was missing. Let me tell you something, church, you don't try to join the most fancy church, the most eloquent bunch, you stay with Christ, where the Spirit of the Lord is. Then he must have had thought of the great victories that God had given him, and of the times that he had, that when his eyes were open, that he he could see the promises of god but now since he had been caught up into this thing his eyes was been put out so many people today get caught away in mental illusions never think of the such the scripture to see whether it's right or not others try to see it doesn't make any difference paul in acts 19 thought it made a difference and he said if an angel from heaven preached any other gospel thing let him be accursed seeing it does make a difference now we see samson standing there how he is thinking of the things that he once did with the kingdom of god and of how god he had failed god and he had failed god's people yes sir now he was a prisoner of the very nation that god raised him up to destroy i want to post here a minute pentecost you know i love you when i come to you jack moore Richard T. Reed, Brother J. H. Brown, Brother Ben Pemberton, and other great men to find out the things that you had. It seemed that we had so much in common till we was like a glove that fit on a hand. I fit right with you. For the message, not knowing there was a church that I believed in. Here was a group of people already to receive it. I am still Brother Burnham. I am still your brother and I love you. But do you realize the very thing that God raised you up for? You have surrendered to it. God brought you out of them organizations years ago 
to make a people out of you and you turn around and organize a thing just of what God brought you out to defy. I challenge any person to show me any place in history since a church first organized, which was a Roman Catholic church at Odyssea, or Nicaea, rather, Rome, when the Catholic church was organized and made an organization and has any church from Martin Luther this side, when God gave Martin Luther the revelation of justification, and as soon as Luther was gone, they made an organization out of it, and it fell, along with Mosley, after him and Asbury, and so forth, left, they made an organization out of it, and it fell, along came Alexander Campbell, and it fell, with the organization, along came John Smith for the Baptist, and it fell, and every time that man has tried to organize something of a man-made system, it fell and never did rise again, there is not no history nowhere or any church that ever organized and ho but what did fall and every one fell never rose again the children of israel in this type was to follow the pillar of fire and every night they must be ready not to organize and set down here but to organize with the fire that's what god wants his people to do move with the spirit move with the time you say well brother branham we have had all kinds of rains and inner rains and outer rains. You're intelligent. I don't care what kind of a revelation it is and how good it looks. If it's not according to God's word, leave it alone. This is a blueprint through the wilderness, the word of the Lord. But here stands the church today, the Pentecostal church. In about many, in about 20 or different third organizations, each one calling the other, this, that, and the other, buzzard roast, and so forth. What are his grace? When the very thing that God pulled you out of them denominations for you, turn around and done the very same thing that they did. That's exactly what Samson done. God raised up Samson to destroy the nation, and God raised you up for people, not an organization. But when God started Israel from Egypt, they were only about 10 days journey from the promised land about 40 miles but they stayed in the wilderness for 40 years why grace had furnished them a lamb for their sins a circumcision of a sign a pillar of fire as a witness moses a prophet grace had provided everything they had need of but they wanted something to do themselves little did they know when miriam was dancing with a tambourine and the children of israel dancing with her and moses singing in the spirit they were only 10 days from the full promised land little did they know 40 years and the carcasses would rot in the wilderness what did it israel made its most right decision it ever made when it accepted law instead of grace when they wanted to make some bishops and something of their own something they had to do into it god was in the midst of them leading them and that's exactly what pentecost did when god revealed some new something in the scripture instead of they call it new issues or whatever you want to do about it but when god revealed something instead of accepting truth and test it with the bible they pulled out and made an organization separated themselves and then along come this that and the other and now you stand corrupted the pentecostal church bound in the factors of organization the thing that god raised you up to destroy and now you're just as organized as they are godly men in every one of them and women that's true every one of them and we are everyone guilty pot cannot call kettle black we're all guilty every one of us you oneness twoness threeness and whatever you might be what a disgrace what a reproach that you brought upon jesus christ what a reproach to the name of pentecost they brought so much reproach till it becomes a disgraceful name almost and the people hardly want to associate themselves with such a name is because that you did what you're supposed not to do and going on and following the commandments of the lord should be one great unit of god marching on to victory today he let a woman lure him away from the word of god now he stands doing his tricks for the devil that's right just exactly the same thing is taking place today that jezebel the mother of harlots revelation 17 says that she was the mother of harlots now if she is a whore that's a woman that lives untrue to her husband she claims christ her husband and don't live by his commandment 
and what are the other churches doing? What the hell not? It's the same thing as the other. What is it? Prostitution to God's word. And she was a mother of harlots and led the Jezebel doctrine and so forth because a bunch of intellectual men that wants to get together and organize something so they can have big names themselves. And there stands a church, divided brotherhood. Oh, what a disgrace to meet. What a terrible thing it is spiritually blind. Oh, you say, well, I'm not scripturally blind. Actions speak louder than words. Prove you are blind by the way you stumble over things. See, now remember, this tip is being made and will be sent around the world. See, and I'm not so much speaking right here, but this goes to about 17 different nations out into jungles and everywhere. Spiritually blind, blind to what? The word of God, the truth of God. Your organization won't let five ministers that comes to me and say i believe that to be the truth but abraham but if i preach that now there you are if i believe that well the people would i don't care what the people says i don't care what the organization says it's what god said to be the truth and if it's the truth of god god will back it up how can you expect to have faith when you have desires to honor one from another see it takes faith away from you went back to the denominations. Pentecost that was born out of a denomination. Pentecost was not born in a denomination. It was born out of a denomination. And the cunningness of Satan pulled you right back into it while you come out of as a hog, went to its wallow, and the dog goes to its wallow. Now, look at them defeated. We ought to already be over in the promised land. Jesus Christ ought to be so eminent among us till there wouldn't be any sickness. Oh, it would be glorious. There shouldn't be bobbed hair women, short wearing dresses, and it shouldn't be that man that's married three or four times deacons in our church. And don't tell me it's not Pentecost, it sure is, but it's because of social prestige. I oughtn't to be, but it is. Why? Because denominational pools, political money, instead of coping with the word, brush out some precious brother and put somebody on because he's got a big social standing in the town. I want a man that's got social standing in glory. If he don't know his ABCs, what difference does it make? Do you know what ABC stands for? Always believe Christ. That's right. You learn that. Some months come to me not long ago and said, Brother Branham, a very one of the best known Pentecostal ministers in the land, he took me up in his room. He said, I want to pray for you. I said, I'm not sick. He said, I love you. I said, that's what you felt. He said, told me, said, why don't you leave off of them women about their bobbed hair and all this kind of stuff and about the church? He said, that's not your business. I said, whose is it then? He said, it'll come to pass that you won't have nothing but a bunch of posts to preach to. I said, I'd rather have do that and preach the truth than compromise with the devil. See? He said, Brother Burnham, didn't God call you to pray for the sick? And I said, yes, sir. He said, the people believe you to be a prophet. And I said, well, that, I never said that. He said, but they believe you that way. And said, if you're a prophet, why don't you spend your time on to teaching people how to spiritual gifts and how to heal the sick and how to do these great, get these spiritual gifts and help the church instead of standing constantly bawling the women out and bawling the men out and things like that, said, well, why don't you leave them alone? He said, why don't you teach them something greater than bobbed hair and stuff and let that alone? I said, how can I teach them algebra when they won't even know the ABCs? That's right. Let them learn the ABCs first. An old minister went and preached justification at a revival. Second night, third night, fourth night, fifth night. The deacons called him out and said, Reverend, don't you know no more than the sermon of death on justification? Oh, sure, but let them all get justified first, and then we preach something else. That's right. Oh, if you could only get back to the foundation, and there stood Samson defeated. Now look, we might be prettier, that might be so, but it's just like I was coming down the road the other day. I seen a big sign said, Funks, a hybrid corn, how great it was, but it ain't no good. Is just as no good as it can be, and it's killing the nation. You read about it, you digest. If women keep on eating hybrid beef and corn and things, they can't have a baby in 20 years from now. There is no good in it. What is a hybrid hotbed plant? If it isn't 
original plant, you have to keep spraying it all the time to keep the bugs off of it. The bugs will eat it up, and but if it's original plant, you don't have to spray it. A good healthy plant, a bug won't crawl on it. That's what's the matter. You have to keep babying people in the church. Glory to God, sister. See, you are hybrid. You are brought in by some other way. You take that hybrid corn and plant it back and what you got nothing it won't even make nothing the church is pretty today that's true bigger buildings than you ever had the greatest congregations you ever preached to the better intellected ministers than you used to have you used to have man out of conflict somewhere that god called man there on the broom sage patch but now you have sent your children to school and made grandchildren out of them and come back with all the PhDs and LLDs and even one of the great Pentecostal churches today. Before they send a man to the mission field, he has to stand before a psychiatrist to see if he is mentally intellected enough. Think of it in Pentecost. The requirement was not a mental test. It was a test of the Holy Spirit that fell down on the day of Pentecost. That's out of the question to the people today. Did you know the Roman Catholic Church was the first, the original Pentecostal Church? It taken it 2,000 years to get in the condition it's got today. If this Pentecostal organization keeps on another 50 years, it will be worse than the Catholic Church. That's right. Sin heaping on every side. Now, you may not think that I, you may think that I'm crazy, but I know I'm at sin. And it's true. You just wait and find out, yes? The hybrid, the hybrid corn caused women to narrow their hips and broaden their shoulders and so forth. Evolution used to tell us that in evolution, that certain animals got together and bred something different and something different. It came on out of a man. They kept searching around till they disproved their own theory. Let me tell you something. You farmers here, what make a mule? He's the awfulest animal in the world. He's a hybrid. He ain't got no sense to begin with. Can't teach him nothing. He'll wait all of his life. Get to kick you just before he dies. You can't tell him nothing. What is it? Because he is a hybrid. It reminds me of some hybrid Christians, so-called. You can try to tell an old male something. He'll stand with his ears up and go ho, 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 sing. All he knows is bray and curry. On. You can't tell him the truth and teach him nothing. That's with these people. You tell them about Christ, the same as they should end forever. Ho, ho. The reason my course is past, a brain of some seminary that we learned is a hybrid. The Holy Spirit will punctuate every commandment of God with an amen. That's a seminary, something spirit, breathing out of him, not bring against the word of God. If it's the Holy Spirit, it will punctuate it. Amen. See, you think. I know you think Amul is ignorance, but you know what? He can't tell who his papa was or his mama was. See, his father was a little jack. His mother was a male, but he can't breed back. He's finished. A plant can't breed itself back. Take a white violet and a blue violet. Bring out your pink violet. Plant it two or three times. It'll come back either pink, either white or pink. See, that proves, see, and they never come like that. God said, let everything bring forth of its own kind. And that's the way it remains. Man was made in the image of God, not a monkey, see? That crazy stuff. Notice, you know the ignorance of the mule, but you know what? You can't tell him nothing. He's hard-headed. But I think a real thoroughbred horse, oh my, he knows who his mama was, who his papa was, his pedigree. He knows all his grandparents and everything because he has got a pedigree. That's the way it is for these hybrid so-called Christians. Days and miracles is past. Well, we Presbyterians, we Methodists, we so-and-so don't believe this. We Trinitarians, we so-and-so, we don't. We don't do this, see? We, you don't know where you do stand. But a genuine, born-again, pedigreed Christian from the book of Acts, knows exactly where he stands. He is born of the Spirit, and here is his pedigree. He comes from the branch of God. It will produce the same thing each time. No wonder the church is more prettier. But what's the matter? 
it's run out of the spirit. It's bred itself out with the world. Let the woman wear shorts, play the piano, let the mayor wear makeup, let the man get married four or five times and hold their place position, all these forms of things that they go through. That's exactly what the scripture said. She is just as much defeated as Samson was. Just exactly. Yes, sir. Oh, as Samson thought, I may, I don't want to hold you too long. I'll skip some of the text here. As Samson as stood there and thought of his error and where he could be. Remember Israel, can I? Will you pardon me a minute to go back to Israel? Do you know what? What did they do in those 40 years when they made their organization out there? Instead of going on through, led by the pillar of fire, the angel of the Lord, which was Christ, instead of going on through and following him, in about 10 days they had been the full promise. But you know what? They wandered in the wilderness, the Bible said. They come to Kadesh Barnea, which was the judgment seat, and there when the spies come back and talked about the land, they said, we can't do it. Caleb and Joshua said, we are more than able to do it. For they was looking to God's promise, not what the circumstance was, was. We can't have a church without having an organization. Well, you can't see what God said. That's right. What did they do? Did God bless them? Sure. They wanted about, they married wives, they planted vineyards, and they had babies, and they increased, and they had done good in the wilderness, that's right, but they still wasn't in full blessing. So when all these who made this great group, big group of organization, old fighters, it was called, all right, God let them stay there till every one of them died. And then he started with a new generation under the leadership of Joshua, who believed the word, amen, and he took them to the promised land. Oh God, may this young generation of Pentecostals get the vision, see? They went on to the promised land. We ought to be where we have all kinds of gifts of God. We did speak with tongues, that's right, that's fine. Nothing against that. Moses crossed the Red Sea. The enemy was killed behind him. We appreciate that. But that's still not all of it. How little did your fathers and mothers think when they was standing out there and shooting pistols through the windows at them and them dancing the spirit in their children would ever come to this but it did but there's a new generation coming on now samson's hair had grown out seeing watch don't never let liar ever weave you back into something like that uh -huh, stay away from it that's the thing that's cost you you was raised up to condemn it and i've tried my best to do it Though I've stood alone, but I've tried my best to stand to the commandments of God, I see the church stand there, stripped of the power of God, stripped of the blessings, stripped of the gifts, and God will pour his gift down. They say, they say that's mind reading, mental telepathy, when they ought to be embracing it, see? Well, he is over at the oneness now. No, that's maybe four, or they were this, that, or the other, see? Oh, if you'd only have known your day, don't let it pass you. This is our uniting in Christ. Notice Samson standing there thinking of his error, the things that he had done. Now, do you realize what caused him to be that way? The enemy put his eyes out, and that's the first thing that an organization will do. It will put your eyes out to any other fellowship but them of your own. Amen. I could say a whole lot of things right there, but I won't do it. But you, if you are spiritually minded, you know what I'm talking about. It'll put your eyes out, just you and your group. If you're Methodist, you're only Methodist. If you're Baptist, you're only Baptist. If you're Presbyterian, if you're Oneness, if you're Twoness, if you're Threeness, oh, how many more they got, see? You're just that good. The rest of them is no good. The Baptist had a slogan in the days of Billy Graham, early days, 40 in 44, a million more. What did they get? A bunch of cigarette smoking, church joining hypocrites. When Billy himself, when I was at his breakfast, he said, you know what's the matter? He said, here's the example. He said, I'll go in, said St. Paul went into a city. He had one convert and he went back a year from then, he said, that one convert produced 30 more. He said, I'll go to a city for six weeks and have 30,000 decisions and I come back in six months and can't find 30. 
Well, now I admire the man for his courage, but I'd like to ask him one question. Who took Paul's coins? What? That lazy pastor about him? What was it? Paul stayed with him until he was thoroughly a child of God, born of the Spirit. He took him so far in Christ till he couldn't even look back. They just woke up and maybe join the church or even speak with tongues. I believe in speaking in tongues. I believe the Holy Ghost speaks in tongues. But I know that all that speak with tongues don't have the Holy Ghost. See, I've seen witch doctors speak in tongues and drink blood out of a human skull and call on the devil, speak in tongues and interpret it. That ain't no soundproof. No, no, the life of Christ in you, the fruits bearing a self-record, what's, that's it. But we settle down on that if a man spoke with tongues, that's it. Let him come in. Look, what you got today, see, that's true, speaking in tongues, but not all the truth. Like the colored man eating a slice of watermelon. He said, how do you like it most? He said, that was good, boss. But there is surely some more of it. If I can speak with tongues, surely there is some more of it, see. But what do you, we do? Just like Israel settled on that one thing and then wandered in the wilderness now for 40 years still without the rest of it over in the promised land. That's exactly what we've done. Samson standing there, I must hurry, must have looked back, thought of all those things, and here he was. The very reason he was raised up, he was blinded, and there his great structure, his great organization of a human body, a mountain of flesh standing there, his great big, huge muscles, but no strength. Here we stand today, back in when Pentecost used to rank just so many, maybe four or five hundred people across the whole nation. Today it's the fastest growing church in the world. What are we getting in? A bunch of members with a great framework. We ought to be ten thousand times stouter than we was when we started. And we are ten thousand times weaker than we was when we started. Because we are building it upon a bottomless foundation upon organization, something that God has cast. But how can we build a church upon a Charles of a Sodom and Gomorrah? I hope you don't hate me, but you just sit still a minute and listen to him. He can't do it. What God has cast, he has cast. Then you keep away from anything God has cast. I'm wanting what he is blessing. That's right. Notice as he stood there thinking the warlords have drunk, standing there. I remember that great person. I remember when he stood with a jawbone of a mule in his hand. I remember when he folded up the gates of Gaza and walked to the top of the hill. I remember all these things. When that lion roared after him, that little bit of fellow in the spirit came upon him and he tore that lion in two with his hand. And here he stands bound by a little kid leading him around. And our God, the fish god Dagon, has won the victory over him. There you are. The world has crept into the church, has won the victory. It's undressed our women. It's put a desire in the people's hearts to stay home and watch television instead of going to church and the prayer meeting. The love of the world has crept in and took our Pentecostal church for a hell-bound ride. The desire and the faith run as a person through a prayer line and let them see whatever takes place. The next night, there they are right back again. Abraham said, the faith isn't there. It should be there, but it isn't. When you, God told Abraham once, and 25 years he looked for it, no matter how far back it got, I can hear him say to Sarah, go out there, you are 65 years old, go buy some bird eye and get some pins and make some booties. We're going to have the baby. How do you know you're going to have it? God said so. And that settled it. The first, see, she was about 20 years past menopause. He had lived with her since she was about 16 years old as a young man. Didn't make any difference. Didn't look at that. Didn't consider that. He considered what God said. Separated himself from all unbelief. Went out into the wilderness. That's what's the trouble today. You want to make yourself with an organization of unbelief. Instead of separating yourself, from the things of the world, you want to see how close you can ride to the end of sin 
see how far back you can stay away from it but here there was the first 30 days or 28 days past mixed audience now and you adults know what i'm speaking of sarah honey how you feel no difference at all abraham glory to god we're going to have it anyhow how do you know god sweet soul 10 years past keep them pins laying there and all the bad eye some of his friends come by abraham father of nations how many children do you have glory to god at this time none but i'm going to have them how you know why you are 90 years old don't make a bit of a difference it will be a greater miracle now than it was if it happened back there 20 years ago but today i was prayed for last night I don't feel any better today. Abraham said, what's the matter? You've been stripped. Your favors of church is still there. The organization is as great as the Methodist or the Baptist. We are building to this fiber all the time. But where is that genuine faith? Oh, you clap your hands, you shout and sing songs and dance. My, I've seen that happen in many doctors, which doctors meetings, see them clap their hands and speak in tongues, interpret and jump up and down. Father Divine has the same thing. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a genuine faith that can hold the promise of God and stand there and make it live a scriptural thing. The Mohammedans, I've seen them fall on the street and holler, Allah, 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 until they become so conscious. And me and Billy Paul stood there and seen a man take a sword and punch it just under his heart. And a doctor pour water through this side and come out on the other side, see him take a piece as a lance and run it through his lips and up his nose and don't even bleed a drop, run splinters under his fingernails, hollering Allah, 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 like that, a Mohammedan, and despises the thoughts of Jesus Christ. He didn't have no Holy Spirit, no, no, but he had emotion, that's right, we are, Christianity is not exactly an emotion. Heathenism can produce just as much ecology as Christianity can. But that's not truth. We want truth. Christ is truth. How do we do? We fix ourselves so we stand like Samson. Now, as he stood there thinking what he could have been, I think today the church ought to stand and think with me a few minutes what we could have been if these things hadn't have done this. What we could have been. Then it comes to this his mind something arrived i believe god did it oh if it could only happen on this campground there's a possibility there's a possibility god is forgiving there's a possibility we ain't got long to stay here our time is running out the confederation of churches is taking the country it will unite catholicism we got the money in there just exactly i wish i had time to go into it to show you that it's this nation it's just exactly like israel they come into a strange land, drove out the occupants, inherited the land. That's what we did. Israel, they are their first man, a great man, such man like Joshua, such a man like David, like Solomon. But finally, there come a man on the kingship, and you have a renegade. They find a great man, a Washington, a Lincoln. But now, what they done, the very thing that we come here for, freedom for, you have put it in the White House because you think more of your politics than you do about Christ. Exactly right. And remember, in that time, all the ministers gave in. Jezebel was a leader. Listen, Ahab himself was a pretty nice guy. But Jezebel was the neck behind the head. She was the one who did it. She was a renegade. I ain't got nothing against that man as a president, but it's that Jezebel system that's behind it. Can't you see these popes and things coming in now? One is raising the don't know Joseph. And the first thing you know, we are right now asking the Protestant church to consolidate with it. And every organization will go right into the Federation of Churches. And there you are trapped. We are living off of tax money that will be paid in 40 years from today. The nation is broke. Where is it at? Who has got the money? We haven't got it. Our bonds are no good. We have got to have gold. Who's got it? The Catholic Church. What will they do? Before this whiskey man and all these great holders and stakeholders who will ever give it up, they'll absolutely sell out and the church will loan.
the nation the money and what it will do it will sell its birth rates right straight into catholicism then what are you going to do that's a gold of the world them and the jews and that's a covenant that he makes with israel see your bible readers can teach that in your church you see i'm just showing you i believe the same thing that's how it will have to come to pass and we've got it right there now and we are uh, the organization with the mark of the beast upon us just just exactly like the first beast an image unto it a federation of churches joining up power and they made an image into unto the beast that could both speak and it done the same thing that the first beast did before it right in our church clutches oh children what time is it is there a possibility samson stood there and said what time just is a possibility samson happened to think that a great god is omnipresent his everlasting god i see my mistake i'm going to repent and he cried out there is a possibility that we could do the same thing they of that day this day don't see the vision like samson if we could only see the vision of a possibility start right there right now a possibility see they sit tight and clap their hands and wonder what is going to come out to be. You're going to find out someday you're going to come out on the other end of the horn. See, that time, have great gatherings and glittering worldly things. So we think, well, you know what? We got more members than we ever had. And we can build billions of dollars of buildings, got more money than we ever had, better churches maybe than some of the other Protestants or some of the others has got. Oh man, scholarship. Well, take our children to school and building the same reason for them to go into. Let me tell you right now, a man with an education without the Holy Spirit takes himself every degree he gets further away from God. That's right. You say, I got a Bachelor of Art. Then you are just a little bit further away than you was. Split an egg in an atom and stumble over the bit of grass and they don't know nothing about You've had the old saying, fools will walk with hobnail shoes where angels fear to trod. That's right, scholarship. But it don't bring the spirit. It don't bring the works and life of Jesus Christ. The trouble of it is, the church today is not like Samson. They are not willing to pay the price. Samson prayed right when he prayed, Lord, let me die with the enemy. He knew it was going to cost him something. He knew it was going to cost him something it's going to cost you something it's going to cost me something your social prestige your place and position in the domination lord let me die then i see your purpose he knew it was going to cost him something you must be ready to die out to your enemy to get in the blessings of god samson was willing to pay the price to get the power of god again upon him he was willing to do it are you are you willing to sacrifice the television programs and you know, it used to be wrong for us to go to the movies, but now the devil put one over on you, brought it right in the house with you. That's right, see. I used to go down to the old Methodist preacher, used to sing a song, we let down the bars, we let down the bars, we compromise the sin, we let down the bars, the ship has got out, but how did the ghost get in? You let down the bars, that's all. Oh, I see someone say, now wait a minute, Brother Branham, we have revivals, yeah? What is it? A denominational revival. That's right. Look at your morals and your differences. Is it a revival? Is there a breaking up time? Is there a time that everybody can associate together and have fellowship? If your organization is in it, if that's right, getting further away from the word all the time, that's right, making new bishops and everything. See, Samson knew that his present backsliding condition could not produce the strength of the challenge of the hour. Men and women, my brothers and sisters, let me say this. The church in its present denominational condition cannot produce the strength to challenge the time to call it a time. Men and women want God, honest hearts, and you might leave the oneness and go to the twoness. You might leave the twoness and go to the threeness, and you might do all this, that, or the other, and you're only pulling a paper or mission trotting or acting like, I don't know what, a juvenile kid, that's right. You don't get it like that. Our backslidden strength, it cannot meet the challenge of this hour. The denominations will not take the vindication of the word. 
when Jesus Christ, as I tried to tell you last night, promised this in the last days, he promised to have it here. And you know that by the Bible and for 15 years back and forth across the nation, and they're getting worse all the time. That's right. You see, they don't want it. They say, well, now he associates with oneness or he associates with Trinity. He does this, that or the other. We associate with Christ out in every organization trying But God sees to that, that they see it, and the real believers are like the little prostitutes last night. As soon as it flashed across her path, and the seed of life laying there, she believed it. That was all. It struck fire right now, when there was thousands standing there making fun of it, but no her. She knew that that was the Messiah. She knew that that was a promise, that when he come, he would do that. Wonder if you only knew the same thing. Have we got so wrapped up in organization we are forbidden to even look at it? Wonder if you look at the magazine and pictures and all dirty filth of the world instead of reading your Bible like you should be. Man should not live a bit alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Our children, our boys, has become a bunch of rickies and ricketters, you know, that's right. A bunch of hot dog, road drugs and everything like that. And where you find a Pentecostal boy with his hot rod on the street? Where do you find sister down at their canteen somewhere doing a rock and roll? Where you find pap and mom? Pap out playing golf or out somewhere like that and mom out in the stitch and soap party of some lord she belongs to or something? When it ought to be a home gathered together under the leadership of the Holy Spirit with the Bible back again, there is where you're drifted too, not criticizing, but just shaking your little, see, that you'll understand all the time and oh, I got to close, the Philistines never noticed what was going on. There was something going on, because something began to move in Samson's heart. There was a possibility, see, he felt back to see if it was still there. Some women have a hard time now knowing it was supposed to have that, but see if his promise is still there. See if he still made just feel back and see if he ain't the same yesterday today and forever. He felt it. He knew there was something. He raised his head and had no eyes. They didn't notice the tears coming down out of them empty sockets where the glands was letting the other tears drop down. His head up, his lips moving slowly, tears falling from them blinded sockets. He was repenting. He knew that Jehovah still lived. Though he had wronged, he knew that he was the God. The tears dropping off of his cheeks as he stood there, and the Philistines were still drunk. To notice that if your church members, your colleagues in church don't didn't notice it, you just keep on praying. He wanted to see one more time God's word made manifest before that blended drunken bunch of heathens and believers. If that's the hungering of the church today to see once more the old-fashioned God-sent revival from the pulpit plump to the janitor, an old-fashioned cleaning up, an old revival with the power of God, a gospel that cleans a man thoroughly from the inside out, gun barrel straight, old-fashioned backwards, sky blue killing, sin criminal religion that takes all the Hollywood out of you and them that's interested, there he was praying, not an denomination, now, a new creed, but a vindication of the word, Lord, you were once upon me. You once gave me strength. If I only had that strength, I've got the muscles, but they're weak. We've got the members, but they're weak. They love the things of the world better than they do the things you say. I'm all, oh, look upon the churches and find out. Don't try to deny it. Your actions speak more than your word does, see? Oh, yeah. Got more members, bigger muscles, but where is the strength of the Lord? Your big muscles won't meet the challenge of His hour. The rapture in faith to take the church out of this thing before judgment strikes the earth, and judgment is fixing to strike. I'll say, as my friend Jack Moore said, if God lets America get by with the things it's doing now, He'll be morally obligated to raise up Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize to it for burning her up. Right? Judgment is next. God, take all the world out of me. Give me faith, O Lord. For a rapture, for there will be two in the bed, and all be taken. One left, there will be in the automobile seat, and one will be taken, and the other one left. 
it's going to happen in a moment. You see, Brother Barnum, why don't it be? You might criticize this if it's all right to say it. A brother says, go ahead and say it, brother. Let me drop a little something here. One day, you're going to find out. You're going to say there. Oh, I have been taught that there is this, that, and the other going to happen before the Lord comes. There will be the great tribulation period, and we'll go through it, see? You know one time Jesus was asked a question. He said, why does the scripture say that Elias must first come? And Jesus said, I say unto you, he has already come, and you didn't know it. One of these days you're going to say, well, I thought the church was going, had to do this, that, and the other. I thought there would be a rapture. I thought, well, it will be a secret catching away if he took one here in hot springs and one somewhere else and one down there and one there will make up literally millions of those that come out of the ground and there is at least 500 people every day missed in the world and we don't even know where they went to see the rapture is going to make up of all those who sleep in the dust of the earth that's right with god they'll say well i thought a rapture was to take place it's already passed and you knew it not you are left see well everything is going yes sir it's a secret coming the rapture is comes to steal away like that book i read that time what was it? Juliet and Romeo. He came at night time when the people were sleeping in worldliness and all the church in worldliness. And all of a sudden, the cry came and away they went. Listen, you've heard so much in the Christian businessmen, the full gospel men saying, Oh, you know, Reverend Father so and so, the Presbyterians are beginning to receive the Holy Ghost. The Lutherans are beginning to receive the Holy Ghost. You sleeping bunch of people. Don't you know, Jesus said, when that sleeping virgin come to buy oil, it would be that the very time that the bridegroom come and she went in. Remember, they did not get it. Is that right? As both Clebon said, huh? they might went through some emotions, but they really didn't get it. When they come to buy oil, it was, it was too late. And here they are now, the Presbyterian, the Lutheran, look at that full gospel, businessman's voice, and that bunch of men also grandchildren, with this denomination of brethren thinking that that is something great. You might ask someday, well, I thought this. It certainly passed and you knew it not. Let me stop there because I'm not going here to preach doctrine, but the possibilities. Don't you take that chance. This is the day. This is the hour. There's a possibility right now. Not Maybe not at five o'clock. There's a possibility, Lord, I know you are God. I know you are. I am away from you, but I know that these fibers of mine once buzzed with the power of God, I know the things that I care for today. I claim to be Pentecostal, the women. I cut my hair, the man. I do this, that, or the other. And you, man, that will let your wives wear them shorts and do them things. And then call yourself a son of God. Shame on you. I went to such a great denominational church not long ago. To A, they had a meeting. And I went out to visit them. And the pastor had taken me out. And he was going to introduce me to his wife. She was a pianist, and that woman had on a dress so tight that the skin was almost on the outside. She had made makeup on and all kinds of things in her ears. I said, brother, do you mean to say that your wife is a saint? I said, yes, sir. I said, she looks like a saint. I said, I've never seen such in the name of Pentecost and holiness. Oh, brother, we need a house cleaning from the pulpit to the basement. And all of these days, you say I'm Pentecostal. That don't mean no more than being a pig to God. That has nothing to do with Christ. That's just a name. you got to be Pentecost in your heart and the fruits of the Spirit. Notice, oh my, he was aware that what would happen if God answered his prayer. Are you aware? Are you aware that organization is going to excommunicate you? Do you realize you're going right now to Federation of Churches and things that you're going in right into, do you realize what it's going to cost you? You know them, women, they play cards and are going to call you the old-fashioned and all that kind of stuff because you won't let your children wear shorts and you are doing these things. You know what it's going to cost you. You better count it before you start. See, You better think about it. You better take it over with God first before you make the start he knowed if his prayer was answered but he was already and he was sincere if the church can only get in that condition if you are ready right now if you are sincere if you really mean business if your eyes are open to what i'm trying to tell you you in a roundabout way 
if you're sincere then say lord i don't care what it is i'm ready i see the sign i know it's later than we think it's time to come then samson cried out lord they poked my eyes out i know that you are god i know that you have power to do it i know you can set me free from these fetters just once more lord lord just once more just once more lord just once more let there be a camp meeting on the side of a hill like there was in a hill at the upper room let there come a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind fill all the house visible evidence of the resurrected christ just once more lord just once more he cried as he cried out in sincerity standing there with his blinded eyes i know the price lord but just once more then god answers prayer he felt the fiber threatening his muscles begin to take hold his strength his leg strength begin to come back he said to the little boy lead me to the post now lead me lord lead me lead me to the post to calvary lead me to the post where i can be crucified till my old worldly life dies out here and all that i am lead me to the post lord when he began to feel the muscles tighten with the power of god he didn't have to see what was taking place he felt what was taking place he began to twist his shoulders and when he did down went the building that day he conquered he killed more philistines than he did all the rest of his days friends there is a possibility that this church in this street now i got about three or four pages of notes there i'm going to let go there's a possibility there's a possibility right here in this camp meeting there's a possibility right here at this hour there's a possibility if you're ready to pay the price we can see another act to take place once more lord we have messed it up we have organized we broke up our brotherhood we have separated our fellowship we have took a little group over here we are fighting with one another and the devil is sitting back watching us whip one another down lord is it possible that once more that all 120 of us can be in one accord in one place is it possible that there will come a sun from heaven as a rushing rushing wind once more lord once more let's stand to our feet and say once more lord once more lord oh lord god hear me lord once more lord once more send the spirit upon this camp meeting in power and glory